Okay, in the last video, we saw that one of the limitations of an ecological study design is the ecological fallacy. So uh, the ecological fallacy is the assumption that relationships that apply at a group level also apply at an individual level. So this uh, assumption is incorrect, and because it's incorrect, that is a limitation of ecological studies because ecological studies look at relationships at a group level but really what we're ultimately most interested in is relationships at an individual level so if an individual experiences a particular exposure what is the outcome likely to be given that exposure so I'm gonna give you a, an example of the ecological fallacy Okay, so in this example, what we're looking at is incidents of motor vehicle accidents. And so we're interested in the relationship between income and incidents of uh, car accidents. And we have three populations, and we know the income, the average income of each population, and we know the incidence of mo car accidents within each of those populations. And so we look at the relationship between income and incidence and we see a very strong relationship. So here on the right I've shown I can I'm showing you a graph of the relationship. So on the x axis here we have incidence of car accidents and on the y axis we have I'm sorry, this is the y axis. The y axis incidence and the x axis income. So over here we've got population A and indicated by the red dot and so population A has got an mean income of 50,000 and an incidence of car accidents at 57%. Uh, so population B has got an in average income of 30,000, incidence of 43%, and population C income of 20, incidence of 29, which is sort of plotted wrong on there, but that's okay. So uh, we can see that there's a very nice relationship here between income and incidence. So the higher your income, the higher your incidence. So there is a positive correlation here that's pretty strong between those two variables. Now, this is an ecological study. Why? Because we have group level data. So we're looking at, um, we're plotting whole groups of individuals, populations, rather than individuals. So now we're going to look at the individual data that make up these populations. So here you see the um, individual data that make up the group data. So for example, this is a very busy slide, but, or, but uh, um, I'll explain it. So population A that we saw before, we saw had an income of 50,000, a mean income of 50,000, and an incidence of 57%. So 57% of the group had gotten into a car accident. And so here are the, here's the population. It consists of seven individuals, and four out of the seven, which are indicated by the red cars, uh, have gotten in an accident. Um, and so that's a 57% incidence. And then the income of each of the individuals is the number that's put on the car. And so this is the same for population B and C. So B, you see that the incidence is lower, 43%, and C, uh, incidence is even lower, 30, 29%. Income is lower in this population C uh, relative to B and A. So here's our old graph that we saw before, and this is a graph of the group data. So we're graphing incidence, which is our outcome of interest, by income and um, we can see that there's a nice relationship. Now, let's look at the data in a different way. If we were looking at the data at an individual level, which is ideal, okay, um, we are going to, what do we want to do to see whether income is related to the incidence of car accidents? Well, what we want to do is compare those individuals that had a car accident to those that did not have a car accident and compare the income in the car accident cases versus the cases in which there was no car accident. And so down here, 
you can see the that uh, result. So what we've got here, we we're, we look at the cases, we look at the average income of the cases, okay? And so uh, the cases are all the cars in red, and so we just simply, across population, so we're not interested in groups anymore, we are looking at all the red cars, and we're averaging the income of all the red cars. And so that income um, comes out to about 30,000. And then we compare that to the income of the people that did not have car accidents, so the blue cars, and there's the income. And so now we see a very different relationship than we did when we just looked at group aggregate data. So when we look at individual data, we can see that the individuals who had car accidents overall had a lower income than did the individuals who avoided car accidents. So looking at the top one, you see that income, it looks like when you collapse across individuals and just look at groups, data that is uh, aggregated or collapsed across groups, averaged across groups, you see that income, higher income, the groups that on average had a higher income had a higher incidence. But then when you break it down into the individuals, you see the exact opposite. And so um, take a minute to look at this. You can actually do the calculations yourself if you like. But um, it's a very important example to just show you how group level data can mask relationships that are occurring at the individual level. Not only mask them, but actually can reveal what looks like an opposite relationship. So that's why ecological studies, while they're very useful in certain circumstances, um, and in some cases the only way to look at certain questions, they have a serious limitation, a number of them, but one of them is this uh, ecological fallacy.